Welcome back to Daytime Live. Now, the music industry has changed dramatically. Um, changed from buying albums and cassettes and CDs to streaming music now. Um, when most of the industry has knowledge of how this works, um, we, the public in Jamaica, don't really understand what's going on. So mm -hmm. we've asked two experts to join us um, to speak about this change. Uh, first up is Lloyd Leng. Big up. <laughs> that Lloyd Leng is a... Data miner yes. and yeah. music curation consultant, um, and he's host of the world's number one reggae history podcast, which is called Reggaeology. Um, mm. The island representative also uh, for global music industry's leading finance firm, which is Sound Royalty. And our next guest is former entertainment lawyer Candy Stevenson, music business and licensing consultant, and owner of the po Posh Rebel LLC. Welcome to both of you. We oh, have nice. a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. Uh, uh, so the, the, the first question is, is, what is metadata? Okay. All right, do you want me to say that one, Candy? Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so metadata is, uh, well, the term metadata means uh, the, the, it, the data of data. So it is the information about the information that we are trying to get. In this case, metadata is about, um, is the different aspects of how you label your song so it's recognized within the digital space. So in the metadata, you have uh, different things such as, you know, your ISRC code, your UTC code, your title of your track, and different descriptive information that helps the DSP system to recognize your single, recognize the mood, recognize the tempo. Um, however, we have the habit here of just simply just, you know, posting a song, putting it out there, and at the end of the day, we leave a lot of money on the table when this metadata is not properly managed or recognized. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always say to artists sometimes, take a look at these songs and see how many songs you actually have that are recognized by this metadata. And so it's very important. Uh, it's a meticulous part of the process, very meticulous, um, but it's not something that we can shortcut or go around. If you are not managing your metadata properly, you are leaving a lot of money on just and to jump in what Lloyd is saying, the reason why metadata is so important is because that's what the DSPs use to identify you. Otherwise, they have no idea what your music is. So if you listen to a Spotify, Apple, or a title and the music is streaming, if there's no metadata behind the music, the DSPs can't identify the song title, they can't identify who the owners are. Most importantly, they can't identify who they should pay any mechanical royalties mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. but in like the U.S. is if they can't identify who the money goes to, it goes into what's called a black box because they're going to pay the money out, but it just sits there waiting for someone to claim it. So if you haven't properly done your metadata, you could have money out there that's just sitting in this black box waiting for you to come by and say, this is my song. Oy, oy, oy. And, and, and to even to add on top of that, what Candice is saying is that in our industry, I think uh, the last number from, 20, from 2016, 2018 research shows that we leave about 30 to 45 percent of our revenue on the table. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and that is good information to put yeah. out there because that is one of the most important things that I keep telling artists that you need to get your stuff in order because at the end of the day, there are times when you might be earning and you don't even know you're earning. All right. True. Mm -hmm. But Definitely. you see, Definitely. I'm not I'm not an artist, so maybe this, this is a, a good balance to throw in. So there are two things based on what you have said, Candice, and what you've said, Lloyd. One, what are DSPs or what is DSP and two since the metadata is so important do I need a trained person to help me to input this information should I really be doing it on my own as the artist who doesn't have the knowledge I'll take this one so DSP just simply means digital streaming platforms it's your Spotify's your Apple's your titles your Deezer it's just an acronym so digital streaming platform. And as far as the information in your metadata, it's information that you already have. If you have a manager or a business person on your team, this is something that they should already have. It's information like who wrote the song, right? Mm. Your song, the music publishers, your the type, the mood, the tempo of your song, the song title, your RSIC code, which you should already have if you um, release the song. So this is not anything that you have to go and search and find. This is in basic information about your song that you should already have or someone on your team should have and be equipped to enter for you. It is very manual and tedious, so maybe the artist doesn't want to sit there and do this, right. but a manager or someone on the artist's team can definitely do it. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you for that. 
And to add to what Candice is saying um, on top of that, it's that also, yes, it is very important for the metadata. Um, but another part that, ha that comes before even we, we start looking at the metadata is the split sheet. The split sheet will also determine what information is in that metadata. But, you know, um, in Jamaica, we, it's one of the hardest things to see the sheet and see that was split sheet. Um, but that is the most important part of the start. And because we do not pay a, a lot of attention to split sheet management, Again, from that, that's the very start where we start leaking money on the table. And right. um, a lot of artists in, in Jamaica, we have a lot of money in the black box, um, especially some of our older artists who are going through a lot of hard times right now. Wow. And, um, you know, this is why we look to sometimes to our local lobby houses to try and make a difference for these artists. Yeah, yeah. And I, no, no, please, ahead, please continue, Candice. Candice. I just wanted to clarify what a split sheet was for anyone who's watching who may not know. A split sheet is Thank basically you. just a document that says, or it's one page that has the title of the song, all of the songwriters, and the percentages of the song that they own. It's the basic breakdown of the song and the song owners. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so Lloyd, I, I want to put this question to you. Why, why do you think it's sure. important um, for Jamaican musicians and the public to, to start using other streaming platforms just, aside from just YouTube, which they may use too? I mean, the, the, the thing I'm also saying, Craig, is not about them having to use other platforms. The, the, the biggest problem that is encountered is that, um, you know, they don't have the, the financial facility to do this. We're still, um, our banking system is still locked into the 1980s. We're just right. getting used to credit card, most less debit card. Right. Um, these things are, you know, simple things for everybody else around the world, even in, in many developing countries in Africa, um, where they, their music industry is far and wide above us in terms of, you know, transactions and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So until our banking system until our banking system catches up with, um, you know, the, the current e-commerce uh, experience and ecosystem, you know, we are limiting Jamaicans to YouTube. We are the, one of the biggest consumers of music, but because of the uh, Achilles heel that the banking system has created, mm -hmm. we are also, uh, we, we are one of the biggest consumers of music, but we do not buy music. And mm -hmm. that is the biggest problem. So we're not recognized as a music buying market, and this has also pushed us back in terms of how we are recognized by some of these digital service providers. Mm -hmm. And then, Candice, uh, a lot of major streaming platforms have just started to actually come into the region, and I think um, Lloyd kind of alluded to that. So a lot of Jamaicans have been complaining as to why did it take so long for us and for our region to be prioritized. Are you able to expand on this? Sure, I think that there are several reasons why DSPs may not find the region particularly attractive. And it's because of the, the licensing mechanism. So when you launch into a region, you have to see how much of the original genres from that region can you properly license. And that goes to back what we were saying about having split sheets mm -hmm. and metadata. If, they, if the streaming companies find that they're gonna launch into a region and most of the music, they cannot figure out who owns it, there's no data on it, it's unattractive to them because then it means that they're opening themselves up to litigation. So that's one factor. Then they have to think about when we launch in this market, how can consumers come to us and what, what's their payment structure? A lot of the DSPs use credit cards. And I think in some Latin American markets, you can um, prepay or use other other ways to pay for it. So that's something that you have to consider as well. And then they consider what's the size of this market and how does this market share affect us overall, right? So a lot of, they just go, a lot of um, DSPs just launched in places like Japan and India and Africa. So they're still growing. Remember the Estonian industry that's been around for maybe about 10 years. And even though that sounds like a long time, mm -hmm. it's not a long time because they've just launched in some major markets within the last three or four years. So I think the Caribbean is coming, but we have to come up with the pitfall. Okay, Candice, we don't have we don't have much time at all left. Um, Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have to ask you to, to, to come back and give us updates uh, as as they as they come up because I think that is very important because a lot of times people people you know throw their uh, assumptions and, and and views on artists. Artists have whole heap of youth and all, all mm -hmm, kind of thing, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we do have a lot of people that we 
have to provide for. And in providing for these people, we need to properly tap into different sources of income because this is a legacy. This is your built-in pension. Yeah. That this will continue collecting even after you have passed these songs right, that you have down done. Black box. Will continue to earn. Yep. So it's something that artists need to understand about intellectual property and how yep. it can be yep. willed and things like that. How can we find you on social, social media? media yes. Time running and yes. me, but it's my thing. Some more. <laughs> I know, you know you're but, passionate about it. <laughs> please. I can be, my social media handle is the same as the name of my company. It's The Past Rebel, and that's my handle on IG, on Instagram, I mean, on Clubhouse, basically every platform is the same handle. And Lloyd? Same here. Um, Regiology is my handle on Twitter, Instagram, and Clubhouse, and Regiology.com is where the, is our you know, official website for the world's number one um, music history podcast. That's so, right. Awesome. Where we Thank are. Thanks again. And we have to, we have to get you back on Daytime Live because we have, we have more to talk about. But thank Definitely. you so much. I learned a lot. And I can't <laughs> wait to talk to you guys again because I have a bag of questions for you. Daytime Live. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back. Stick and stay. Soon forward. And Coco's bag of things. Oh. Oh.